Hi, it's Straw Hat Sam. I'm the owner of Straw Hat Aerial as well as the designer of the Flying Squirrel. Uh, this is a next generation design of the Pigeon and the Puffin, uh, which were my previous versions of this Naked Black Magic cinematic FPV drone concept. As you'll notice, this one is a little bit more advanced. So in this video, I'll be going along with you, building everything from the drone itself all the way to installing all of the naked components of the Blackmagic camera inside of the cage. So follow along with me, get all your tools ready, and let's get started on this journey. Here are most of the tools required for building your flying squirrel and installing the naked Blackmagic camera. You will be doing some soldering, so you'll need some solder, uh, flux, and wire strippers, smoke stopper for doing tests without blowing everything up, a squeeze bulb for eliminating dust from the sensor, uh, isopropyl alcohol in a little spray bottle or something for cleaning your solder joints along with a toothbrush. And then um, I use this Tessa 51036 tape. This is useful for the sensor ribbon cable. For mounting the accessory PCBs to the motherboard, we use a uh, 3M V HB tape and this one is nice because it's extra thin and allows for the uh, correct tolerances for everything to line up. So I recommend you get this exact tape if you can. You also need needle nose pliers, side cutters, mostly for trimming off zip ties, which you'll need a lot of, and then uh, some socket drivers, a, a four millimeter socket driver for these tiny little M2 hex nuts, and then a 5.5 for those M3 nylon nuts for the flight stack of the drone components, a uh, Phillips double zero screwdriver, a Phillips number one screwdriver, a hex um, 1.5 millimeter, hex 2 millimeter, and hex 2.5 millimeter driver, a box cutter for cutting the little bits of silicone tubing, some blue Loctite for securing those screws, and also a ruler for measuring some stuff like wiring and tubing cutting lengths. And perhaps one of the most important tools will be your fine tip tweezers. These will be super useful for peeling off the backing off of double-sided tape and for uh, pulling on wires and pulling out ribbon cables and installing ribbon cables, all those kinds of things. You'll also need a heat gun of some sort, in addition to a soldering iron with both a fine tip pencil point and a chisel tip for those larger uh, drone components. And you'll want to have your favorite lens on hand so that you can uh, perform the sensor shimming process and use the lens that you plan to use most often. This one is the Laowa 7.5 millimeter. It was also in a pit bull's mouth as the dog grabbed my drone and ran around the field with it for a few minutes. A good thing to check before assembling your kit is make sure all these notches can clear the uh, thickness of the carbon fiber. So these three millimeter arms in this case just barely clear the uh, 3.3 millimeter notches cut into the top and bottom plate. If you do find that the notches are a little too tight then use one of these diamond files to uh, file it out a little bit and then retest for fitment. The very first step is installing the uh, flight stack screws. This bottom plate can accept either 30 by 30.5 um, regular standard spacing or 35 by 35 specifically for the iFlight Blitz 80 amp 8S ESC um, but just keep in mind you'll need to have some kind of adapting regime to fit the flight controllers which are still 30 by 30 so I recommend you try to find a flight controller with 30 by 30 mounting and uh, there are some 8S ones out there that still fulfill that requirement so to install these, um, use Loctite and these are countersunk screws so you're going to be wanting to take advantage of these uh, little countersunk sides and that tells you which orientation to install it as well. Okay, next, um, let's tighten these screws down. Uh, you don't want to tighten it by like torquing this one. Um, you actually want to just tighten it on the nut side by uh, 
um, tightening all the way with the screwdriver on the back side and then using the uh, nut driver here to tighten the rest of the way. And you don't need to like go crazy hard on these things because you are you're giving it a lot of torque just with a little bit of pressure. And just go around to make sure that all of these nuts are tight. Okay, next we're gonna install these vertical plates. And this will be also your first experience using these magical T brackets. Um, keep in mind the hardware for this video may be a little bit different than what you see in your kit. Um, everything should be silver for your kit. So you'll need four of these T brackets for this little operation. And then you'll need the uh, M2.5 by six millimeter socket head screws. So what you're gonna do is take a screw, and uh, if I forget to mention at any point, uh, make sure to use Loctite on all these little screws. So uh, tip, put it through your front plate like so, and then the T-bracket is uh, installed in this orientation. and just tighten it down, finger tight. Repeat the same operation and in a similar orientation for the rear portion of the front plate. And uh, just eyeball it, make sure it's roughly um, square like that. Okay, next we're gonna take this component tray and slide that in there. In addition to this uh, fan tray, um, slot, slot that in there too. And then you can take the other side of the front plate and align the holes a little bit. So I find it easier to do one at a time. So I did the component plate first. Holding that in place, I can hold the fan tray. Oops, I lost the notches on my component plate. Okay, now we got the fan tray in there and it's all aligned. You can see it's a little unstable. You have to find the right place to grip it so it doesn't spring out on you. I guess we can set this down. Take another screw, add some Loctite. Just a little bit of Loctite. Oh, and careful with picking it back up because you might lose your place. Okay, and screw it in. All right, now we can relax and get another screw, get some Loctite and screw that in lightly. And um, now, you can back it out a little bit, back this one out a little bit, and set it aside for now. We're gonna do the same operation for these rear plates. We're doing M2.5 by six millimeter screw. Insert it through one of the sides of the rear plate. And then for these ones, orient the T bracket. So the uh, boss portion is facing out the back like that, and you can get it roughly aligned. Okay, and then for this one, we've got to insert our XT60M mount, and uh, you wanna orient it so that, such that the cutout is to the right, and then same exact component tray part, they're both the same size, it goes right here. And this will be useful for mounting your receiver. The front one will be for mounting your regulator. For this one, uh, try to do one at a time. Let's do the XT60 first, hold that in place, then do the component tray, push that into place, and uh, maybe you should get your screws ready before doing that, but. All right, and then once again, back out two of the screws just a little bit, actually, but you want them to like maintain correct orientation. So tighten one side, and then make sure it's uh, aligned and straight. I'm gonna cheat a little here, okay? And then loosen and loosen. Next, we're gonna attach these to the bottom plate. And to do that, we're gonna use these M3 countersunk eight millimeter screws and be generous with the Loctite on these ones because you don't want these coming undone. Let's do the front side first. The way you can tell the difference between the front and the back, the back has these little 
um, slots cut into it and the front does not. So, uh, put your countersink screw in there. Oh, this is the, the front end. And uh, actually, I'll just show you how it goes into place. So it just lines up with these notches right here. See that? Magic. And it should go in pretty easily because we loosened two of these screws. Later, when we tighten them down, it actually clamps down onto the carbon. Okay, so this one's already Loctited. Let's screw that in. Don't need to go all the way, just barely tight. So that stays in place. And then get the other one, apply plenty of Loctite, and screw this one into place as well. Okay, now what we can do is loosen all of these M2.5 screws so that we have perfect alignment when we go ahead and tighten these M3 screws all the way. So, you know, don't tighten like it's gonna be lasting till the end of the universe, but, you know, give it a good amount of torque. And then, like, you'll see it's still, eh, it's pretty locked in there, but, you know, there's still a little bit of play, so that's where we tighten the M2.5 screws, which clamps sideways into the carbon. You're probably thinking, Sam, like, what if you need to remove the front plates and the board PCB is right above this. You're not gonna be able to access those screws without removing the whole PCB. Nope, that's okay. You can actually remove these screws from the side and then remove the uh, front plates if they ever get broken in a crash or you just need more access to the electronics or something like that. Okay, let's repeat this for the rear plate. If you ever feel any like resistance, just loosen things up, make sure they're well aligned, and then try again. Okay, cool. So our little vertical plates are installed. And uh, another finishing touch is um, this two millimeter standoff. We gotta insert that. So take a uh, M2 by eight millimeter socket head screw and uh, apply a little bit of Loctite, not a ton. I'm actually gonna take some off with my fingers. And then stick that standoff in there and screw that in there. Okay, and let's put another screw in there. Just a teeny bit of Loctite. For these kinds of smooth standoffs, you can tighten them by just uh, alternating from each side. So tighten one side as much as you can, then tighten the other side, tighten this side, and if you have to, you can always just grip them um, with pliers. Okay, and what that does is it makes the XT60 mount locked in place so that it won't jiggle around as you're plugging and unplugging. Let's prepare the bottom plate with these T brackets so that we can both mount the uh, top plate to the bottom plate and also install the arms. For all of these T bracket installations, we'll be using M2.5 by six millimeter socket head screws and make sure to use Loctite on all of these joints. There are eight screw holes uh, spaced throughout the frame that we're gonna install these T-brackets into. And they're all located next to these uh, arm notches. So install one of these uh, screws. The T-brackets are installed such that this round boss part is facing toward the notch and outward like this. You want to align the T-bracket roughly so it's parallel with the notch but not quite, you can leave it a little bit more this way. And uh, go ahead and tighten that down, but not all the way, just barely snug, just so it doesn't rotate in place. Install the rest of the T-brackets. Okay. So all the T-brackets are installed and this is how the assembly should appear. Make sure to double check and reference your bottom plate versus mine to make sure all of those are installed in the correct orientation. Next, you can go ahead and install these uh, M2 by 20 millimeter standoffs. They require an M2 by eight millimeter socket head screw. And once again, Loctite. 
You install these standoffs in the front end because these are the mounting points for the card door, which keeps the uh, CFast card from flying out in a crash. And go ahead and grip the standoff with some pliers, and you can tighten this bottom uh, joint all the way down. Okay, let's repeat for the other standoff. And we actually have two more T-brackets to install. They go in this hole and this hole. These are the T-brackets that will support the side plates, which eventually hold the lens assembly. Same as the arm brackets, these screws require um, Loctite. Run an M2.5 by 6 millimeter screw through the bottom of this hole, and then uh, install the T-brackets such that the boss is pointing outward and to the rear, toward the rear. And once again, tighten it till it's barely snug. And repeat for the other side. Okay, just like that. Next, it's time to install some 3D printed stuff. First off is the fan grommet. And you can press this in here from the top, but uh, in order to get the orientation correct, pay special note to this bottom lip, which will prevent the little CPU fan from falling down into the drone. So uh, you, it, because it's TPU, you can just bend it and force it into the little square until it all clicks into place. Next is preparing the card door, and for this process you'll need a heat gun. And um, first off, with the clip uh, end, what I like to do is actually get some side cutters and just clip a slight angle onto the, uh, the lip of the clicky click in order to make it easier for it to clear the carbon without getting hung up before clicking into place on this standoff. Okay, so the way this works is uh, these little carbon fiber prongs will just snap into place. And the orientation, you wanna make sure you get the orientation correct before uh, assembling it. Uh, if you accidentally do do it backwards, you can just gently heat up the PETG prints and then just force it apart. Uh, just make sure to reheat the part and let it relax and become its original shape before reinstalling. So, um, I'll show you how this goes. You just notch it into here, and uh, I usually try to put in both ends at the same time so I can use them as a uh, soft surface to press up against. So, make sure it's oriented like this because this is how it's going to uh, function. And yeah, just press it into place, and sometimes it snaps easily like that, and uh, then just pull on it to make sure it's nice and secure. If it doesn't snap so easily, perhaps it's extra cold where you live, then you want to warm it up ever so gently with the heat gun. Definitely don't overheat these uh, prints. Okay, and now that we have these little M2 standoffs, we can uh, put the hinge onto the standoff. And if I just go ahead and try, I can already see it's quite a tight fit, and I'm not going to be able to force it on with brute strength without breaking something. So uh, what you want to do is just heat up the uh, hinge a little bit. Be careful not to overheat. And let's give it a try. And that's feeling pretty good. I think it needs a little more heat, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pull it off and try again because it's not quite as loose as I would like it. Okay, let's try this now. Oh yeah, much better. Let's let that cool off for a bit. Okay, for the snap side, usually the snap is quite aggressive and hard to uh, remove after snapping onto the standoff. So um, what we got to do is once again use the same process that we did for the hinge as with the snaps. Just heat up the uh, the little gripper just ever so slightly and uh, try closing it up. Now that it's on there, just let it cool down. Now that it's back to room temperature, you can uh, now open it and close it nicely and it will click into place and be pryable with a single finger. Next up are these uh, this buttons assembly. These are compliant mechanism 3D prints and uh, the way it's printed is in this position. I do some QC on it, but you may have to uh, take some pliers and 
make that first little uh, movement so it goes to the other side. And then take the pliers and just put a few dozen cycles on there. And you'll hear the uh, noise, the snapping noise changes as it gets um, seasoned. And then next we got to um, prepare this momentary switch because as is, this is not gonna work very well. What we're gonna do is heat up this little leaf spring and then pull on the button to make clearance for the momentary switch on the uh, custom PCB that's part of the uh, camera. So what you do is you just heat this up a little bit careful not to melt anything, then pull on it from the opposite side like this while keeping the, uh, the button straight. And I'm kind of just aligning this uh, with my eyeballs and uh, hoping for the best. Hopefully you can do this a little bit better off camera. And it looks like I overheated it a little bit. As it's starting to cool, I'm just doing micro alignments to make sure it's every, it's centered. Okay, so it's looking pretty good. As you can see, I melted it a little bit. The next part is installing the uh, light pipe. Grip it with some needle nose pliers like this, and then we're gonna shove it into this hole. Definitely wait until this part is cooled down before attempting this. And then we're gonna just shove it in there and uh, go bit by bit. A little bit more, still has further to go. Shove it in some more. A little bit further to go, maybe like one millimeter. There we go. That's looking good. Now that our buttons is finished and the card door is installed, um, we can go ahead and throw on the top plate. We're doing this now and not installing the PCB for the motherboard because it's a good idea to build up your drone before uh, flying the Naked Black Magic just to make sure that it's not gonna fly away on you or have any other kind of issues. So let's go ahead and do a full dry installation. What you'll need is uh, your buttons panel and the connector panel. Uh, the buttons thing just slots into place on these little two slots on the uh, bottom plate facing this direction such that the uh, record button is right in the center approximately. And then uh, the connector panel of course, it doesn't matter right now, but it, it's oriented like so um, for installation, like that. And then the top plate, uh, you arrange it such that the sensor ribbon cable port is in the top right hand corner and that these, these two slots right here align with the, uh, the buttons. So let's go ahead and uh, make sure that is in place. And then meanwhile, the rear connector panel must be aligned. Okay, so connector panel, button panel, both are aligned. Now we can start securing it together with these M2.5 by six millimeter socket head screws. And for these ones, I do recommend adding a little bit of Loctite, uh, not as much as the bottom set of screws, but just a little bit to make sure it doesn't vibrate loose. Um, so there should be 10 of these screws that you need to install into all 10 uh, T-brackets. Now that you got all 10 of these M2.5 screws um, installed, don't tighten them yet. Uh, you'll tighten them later after we install the arms. Uh, next, you can uh, place the uh, M2 by eight millimeter socket head screws for the card door, these little guys. And you don't need Loctite for the uh, top set of screws uh, because you'll be removing the top plate anyway. And uh, these ones don't tend to vibrate loose as much. Uh, but you can go ahead and tighten those down. Um, just don't over tighten. Keep in mind it's only M2 thread. Okay, so this is our cage. Looking pretty cool. Next up is uh, the arm installation. And for these arms, we'll be installing them using M3 by eight millimeter socket head screws. And the way this works is uh, all the longer arms, see that you got a long arm and a short arm. 
All of the longer arms go into these positions on the inner positions of the drone and then the shorter arms go on the outer positions here. And you'll definitely want to use Loctite on these screws because they are critical to holding the arm together. These arms are asymmetrical, so you want the uh, top little uh, notch or lip to be on the underside of the drone like this. So installing the arms goes like this. You slot it into place in the notches and the hole in the T-bracket should roughly line up with the uh, slot. And uh, the reason why all of these T-brackets are not tightened down all the way is so that they can actually swivel a little bit as you tighten the screw down. So uh, get that screw um, threaded in there. Try not to cross thread anything, just make sure it's going easy. You should never feel very much resistance until maybe toward the very end where the uh, uh, the bracket is making flush contact with the with the carbon and you can go ahead and tighten it down all the way and let's repeat that procedure for all of the long arms and be sure to use Loctite along the way. All right all four long arms are installed and just double check again that the little nubby nubs are facing on the bottom side of the drone. Let's go ahead and get started on the shorter arms now. Uh, same direction as the long arms just like this. All right, now that all eight armlets are installed and the M3 socket head screws are fully tightened, then you can go ahead and tighten down the M2.5 screws corresponding to each arm and T-bracket. And don't forget to also tighten the ones on the underside too. Now that we got our arms fully installed and tightened, we can go ahead and get started on the electronics for the drone. And the first most core piece is your ESC. Yeah, what we're gonna do is a, a dry fit. So make sure that slips over the, uh, the standoffs. If you find that there's issues with the um, alignment of the um, flight stack screws, sometimes they are just like, I don't know, the way they're pressed or something, they're not quite straight. So you can actually bend the uh, flight stack screws so that they're straight. Okay, so pushing this on there. Okay, and then uh, your kit should come with a uh, XT60M and this is meant to go into place right there. Now the trick is um, we're gonna solder wires up to this a little bit longer than what we need and then we're gonna trim them short and then solder them to the ESC. So just measure roughly um, how far that is. So I would say it's like 60 um, millimeters. So we wanna give ourselves a little bit of slack and let's cut 80 millimeters worth of 12 gauge wire. Okay, so we can set the drone aside for now. Get our 12 gauge wire, and remember we're gonna do, gonna do 80 millimeters. Mark it with my fingernail and cut on the indentation. I can just do the same length, match it with the, uh, the black wire. Nothing has to be precise at this point because you have extra. And uh, I know this is a beginner thing, but I, I figured I'd show you my technique because it's very fundamental to have a nice solid connection for your battery side. So I'm just gonna go through this process with you so you can see how I do it. I'm gonna turn on my soldering iron and set it to uh, 350 degrees Celsius. We don't want it to be too hot because if it's too hot, the, uh, the solder becomes so liquidy that it wicks up further into the wire and a larger portion of the wire becomes rigid. What I'm gonna do is, um, uh, the label on this thing is terrible. It's Kester No Clean Flux. Just soaking all areas of the wires with that flux. With the soldering iron, I'm gonna clean it off with the wet sponge, get a nice blob going. That's a good first run, but we're gonna hit that later again after it cools down. You don't wanna overheat the wire because you'll get that wicking effect 
After that, I'm gonna reapply some flux. And what this will do, make sure that all the wires get all the solder. Uh, for the XT60 mount thing, let me zoom out a bit here. Uh, I'm gonna add flux onto the little D cup and we're gonna tin the little cavities on this thing. Load up some solder on both sides of my chisel tip. And once again, we're still at 350 degrees Celsius. And I'm just gonna heat up that pad and then flow some solder into it. And that's all you need for now. Let it cool down, flip it over, and let's do it again. Okay, next note which side is positive, which side is negative. You can double check by looking at the little indentations here. This one says positive, the other one says negative. But if it doesn't have that, you can see that the square side is positive, the rounded side is negative. We're gonna reapply some flux and then all we got to do now that both sides are tinned is reflow and twist. So we're going to heat up the wire so it heats up and becomes molten. And then it's going to in turn heat up the uh, connector. You might have to touch the connector as well in order to get that heated up faster. And then I'm going to twist it and push it in at the same time. And it looks like we got a lot of excess solder on there. So I don't like the way that looks, it's not all smooth. So I'm just gonna reflow that some more. So I'm just putting a little dab of solder on my iron and just smoothing that out. That looks decent. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing for the ground side. So that is gonna be a nice, powerful foundation for your drone. And to be honest, I do actually like to uh, clean up all these joints with isopropyl alcohol, 99%. So I'm gonna clean this up before I put on the heat shrink. So I just got a couple pieces here. Slip those right on. And then we can use the uh, heat gun. And I think I need to press this one down a bit more. Looking pretty good. Okay, next I'm gonna finagle this thing into the uh, rear compartment and insert it into the XT60 mount. Let's see, if we do a side view, I'm gonna show you. We want these wires to actually lay flat further down than you think in order to make space for the capacitor later. So keep that in mind. And at this point, actually, you could screw in this XT60 to, just to hold it into place. Okay, so I'm holding this down to make sure the wires are situated as I want. And I'm just gonna use my fingernail to uh, make an indentation, need that mark, and I'm gonna cut it with the side cutters. And then we don't cut the uh, black wire the same length because uh, the bending is different. So situate your wires in the back side, like so, and then rest that onto the pad and then add a little bit of extra slack, more than you think you need, just in case. And make that indentation with your fingernail and cut that indentation. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this and let's solder it to our ESC. Okay, after doing that cutting operation, you'll notice that the red wire is uh, longer than the black wire and that's because we oriented with such that the uh, red was on top. Okay, we're gonna use the same procedure that we used for the XT60 side. Um, we gotta tin these wires up and make sure they're nice and saturated with plenty of solder before we fuse them to the pads of the ESC. So uh, turning on our um, soldering iron to 350 Celsius. Okay, my ESC is already got some solder on it from being used earlier. So I'm gonna apply some flux to both sides, both the pads and the wires. And we're gonna kick up our uh, soldering iron to 450 degrees Celsius. And the reason why is we want a, a short burst of intense heat in order to melt those pads and fuse the wires. 
we don't want to uh, keep the soldering iron on the pads for too long. So it's at 450. Let's go ahead and start with the positive. And I'm going to orient the XT60 vertically so that it kind of matches how it's going to sit when it's installed. Like a beautiful big blob of solder. Usually the ground pad um, is a lot, takes a lot more heat. Looking good. Just gonna brush that off a little bit with some isopropyl alcohol. Okay, let's do a uh, dry fit once again. Um, so this time we're gonna have to, you know, fancy our way in there. We've got ourselves some slack here which will make way for the uh, capacitor, which will, ex which will uh, take the place of my index finger here. So let's um, remove this and get to work on the capacitor. Uh, this is my recommended capacitor, uh, 1500 microfarad, 50 volts. You can use this for 6S and 8S. This is sold separately on my website, and it's a nice fit because it's 16 millimeters wide, so it's quite chonky and short. Uh, you can cut both of the legs pretty short, maybe just like three or four millimeters long. Preheat your soldering iron to 350 Celsius and uh, let's apply some uh, flux. We're gonna tin these legs. That's it, that's all we need there. So this capacitor, uh, negative side facing on the same side as the black wire. This capacitor is gonna sit on top like that and just be taped and heat shrunk to the, uh, the 12 gauge wires there. So it might actually help to bend these prongs downward a little bit to have them face, but it's up to you. And this will, uh, mocking it up like this will help you decide how long of a wire to uh, use to connect the capacitor to the main pads of the ESC. For me, I'm just gonna do 20 millimeters and call it a day. And both sides can be the same exact length. And I'm going to strip both sides of each wire and tin both sides of each wire. Soldering iron set to 350. Okay, and um, this is what they should look like. They should still have some flexibility to them. You don't want the solder to flow all the way the whole length of the wire. Uh, next I'm going to bend these prongs down a little bit in order to get it to have a, a better running start when aligning with the ESC that sits below it. Okay, let's uh, solder up these little jumper wires to the capacitor. So I'm going to tin both sides. Soldering iron is at 350 Celsius. Check both sides to make sure that the fusing process uh, occurred all the way around the wire. Clean up those joints a little bit with some isopropyl alcohol. So I'm going to cut little tiny lengths of this heat shrink and stick them on. This is purely optional. You don't have to do, to do this. I just do it because of aesthetics and making sure uh, you don't get a short. Okay, cool. Okay, it's time to attach our capacitor. And uh, once again, flux on both sides. And I'm preheating my soldering iron to 450 Celsius. We want plenty of heat in order to make this fusion process happen. So I got a nice glob of solder on my iron and I'm going to just hope for the best Okay, that looks pretty good. And let's repeat it again for the negative side. This one will require a bit more heat. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, gotta clean up these joints a little bit. I can start to push it into place a little bit such that the uh, wires kind of curl in you know, make, make it look all pretty. To uh, put this capacitor in its place and keep it there, I'm gonna use just some um, 
fiberglass strapping tape. I'm gonna slip on some heat shrink tubing as well. Okay, let's do a dry fit again. And our XT60 goes in like this. And our capacitor goes in like that. And you kind of have to angle the ESC because of the uh, component tray here. Blocks things a little bit, but it's okay. And then you kind of change the angle and let it settle into place. Meanwhile, the XC60 goes into that hole. And it looks like it worked out exactly how I imagined. Wow, that's great. Next, let's talk about the regulator. Um, this little guy should be included in your kit. It's a convenient little three and a half amp, 12 volt regulator, and this will power the camera and the fans. Also included is a little capacitor that you are required to solder to this regulator. And this is going to be located uh, in here on this component tray. And it will be wired up to the ESC pads here, just straight up VBAT. And then this wire will be connected to the camera on the other side. And there will actually be another wire connected to the component cooling fan, which is uh, gonna be living right here on this specially made fan tray. And this wire will also have to be connected to the regulator. So it's a lot of wires, but we need them, right? So let's get started on building this little guy. We can open up the little package that it comes in. We can go ahead and trim our capacitor leads shorter. The pads here are marked and you want to have the uh, ground pad and the VN pad attached to the capacitor. So what I'm going to do actually is cheat and uh, squeeze these little prongs together, insert them into the holes, and then bend it. And then I'll solder it into place. So while the soldering iron is preheating to 350 degrees Celsius, I'm going to add some uh, flux. And to ensure proper alignment, I'm going to be not tinning and reflowing, but just soldering all in one step. Bam. Bam. Okay, so we want to estimate how much wiring we need in order to uh, span the gap across the ESC. And looking at it with my ruler, exactly would be about maybe seven uh, centimeters, but we want a little bit more than that because we're gonna be twisting the wires, which shortens the length of the wire. So instead of seven, I'm gonna make it 85 millimeters long. So remember that number. Okay, so I'm gonna measure 85 millimeters of um, 26 gauge wire. And I'm gonna do the same length of wire for the red. Okay, let's strip them. And make sure that soldering iron is on because you'll need it. And put some flux on here. I've now changed to a uh, finer pencil tip for this part of the process. Okay, so I'm gonna solder these wires to the ground and V in sides since these wires will be attached to the ESC. And once again, a fine tip and 350 degrees Celsius. Let's clean that up a little bit. Next, what I'm gonna do is braid these two wires together. So you cross them over and I'm gonna twist each wire uh, clockwise, but I'm gonna wrap them counterclockwise. And what this does is keeps the wires twisted together and prevents them from fraying. And then once I've reached the end, I twist them further more uh, counterclockwise. This provides a nice tight twist. Okay, so now um, these are the voltage in wires. Now we're gonna have the voltage out wires for the camera. And you want these wires to be extra long. So measure out 150 millimeters of wire. You want more than you need. You can always cut it short later. Okay, so same process for these wires as the other wires.
this time soldering to the V out pads and the shared ground pad. Once again, braid these wires together. Okay, we're almost there. Uh, next we gotta plan out how much wire to uh, uh, save for the fan. This fan uh, is gonna be cooling your VTX mostly um, on your flight stack. And so the direction it blows is the side that doesn't have the spokes. These are the spokes, these three things. The side that doesn't have the spokes is going to be facing that way. So, and it doesn't have a hole. There's three mounting holes here. So it's fine if this cable does this little U shape. And it's going to be connecting uh, via zip ties to this uh, little fan tray. So we got to make sure we give ourselves enough slack for this wiring so that it can connect to the, uh, the regulator underneath it. So my best estimate puts that it about uh, 70 millimeters, and that's where I'm going to trim it. Just a little bit of extra slack, and we can take that up by, by securing the wire with a zip tie. Okay, so let's uh, tin these ends. I'm going to split them apart by using my fingernail. Okay, now we can connect this uh, little fan up to our regulator. So red goes into V out, and then the black goes into the shared ground pad. And you can flip it over to see if those holes are filled in with solder. Okay, I've got this nice piece of heat shrink that I can uh, fit over the top. and. Um, this heat shrink was slightly too small, so I actually spread it apart using some pliers. Fantastique! Okay, we're going to triple check our fitment to make sure this regulator has wires that are long enough. Um, I'm going to end up zip tying and double sided sticky taping the regulator to the tray below. Um, this part right here. Uh, the shorter wire connects to the ESC pads. Looks like we have enough length there, so that's good. This longer wire is going to actually be routed through one of these holes into the uh, through the bottom plate and soldered to the PCB of the camera. And then, of course, we got our fan, which is going to be situated um, something like that. Yeah. All right. So I think we're looking good. I'm going to take the ESC out of the chassis uh, to make soldering easier. And um, yeah, I might trim off a little bit. Nah, I think it's the perfect length. Yeah. So we're good to go. So I'm going to just trim off a little bit just to make these uh, two wires the same length and uh, strip them and tin them. Okay. So this solder job may be a bit more tricky than the others since we have more things in the way, um, so just make sure to use plenty of flux, both on the wires and on the ESC pads. And preheat your uh, oven to uh, 400 or 450. I'm gonna go on the, I'm gonna play dangerously and do 450. Looks like that was a success. Looking pretty clean. I just got to clean it off with some isopropyl alcohol and a brush. Okay, uh, before mounting the ESC for the final time, you'll need to put some M3 nylon nuts on the uh, flight stack in order to give the uh, ESC a little more room so that it doesn't touch the fan. Because this cooling fan here is going to be cooling the uh, the motherboard of the camera. So it needs a little bit of extra space so it doesn't hit 
any components on the bottom of the ESC. Okay, so make sure you're looking like this. And now you can install your ESC. Kind of have to finagle it all together. And let's get this screwed in place. Okay, and then we can um, attach the regulator to this tray. To do that, I'm going to use this uh, double-sided M3M VHB tape. Uh, but first, um, we got to install a, a zip tie on the, onto this tray. Actually, that's optional, but you know I'd prefer to. So to do that without taking off the whole front tray, I mean you could. And it's totally fine to do it that way. I'm just lazy and want to make things harder for myself, I guess, at the same time. Uh, so I'm going to prepare the tray by adding the zip tie. Okay, so the tray now has a zip tie ready for it. Next, I want to prepare the uh, surfaces for the adhesive to make it more effective. Cut a little section of VHB tape. And stick it to the bottom of the regulator. And uh, to help the tape stick to the uh, heat shrink, you can use a heat gun to kind of activate. And then go ahead and peel off that backing. Okay, so uh, the backing is removed. Now we can stick it onto this tray. And you want to align it so far as the uh, capacitor is just resting off of the edge. Just like that. And now we can go ahead and secure that zip tie. Next, let's install the fan. Um, so we want this side to be facing toward the outside, the front of the drone. And I find it easiest just to use zip ties. Trimming off the excess carefully. Okay, now um, you can install some M3 nylon nuts to act as a little bit of a spacer before you install your flight controller. And just make sure the um, ESC uh, board is nice and flat. It's not favoring one side versus another. Okay, now is a good time to uh, don some safety glasses and uh, plug in the battery for the first time and uh, use a smoke stopper as a precaution. What we want to do is make sure that we uh, wired up the ESC just fine and also checking the uh, 12 volts on the regulator right here. So let's uh, connect up our battery, see how we do. Okay, I can hear something. You know what that noise is? It's the fan. Yeah, I can feel the air blowing off of it. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and just double check the airflow is this direction. You want the air to be blowing across your uh, VTX. And just to double check, let's uh, check the voltage on the flying lead using a multimeter. And we got, yeah, 12 volts. Great. So now that we know our drone isn't going to explode, at least yet, um, Let's uh, start mounting the flight controller. And then the flight controller, I have already wired the uh, receiver, the dual diversity receiver, crossfire, nano. And then I've also uh, um, wired up my DJI. So for my particular build, I'll be using the OG air unit, not the O3 air unit. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more about that. But for now, I'm um, just going to press the flight controller on to place 
and uh, plug in the ESC cable harness, which you probably should have prepared and matched up the pins before you installed the ESC. So hopefully you did that. And then you gotta think about where you're gonna put your um, receiver. And I'm like, oh my God, I didn't even think about where I'm gonna put it. Oh, but wait, luckily Sam thought ahead and he prepared the perfect little location for your receiver. Um, I guess you can stick this down with some double-sided tape now. And something I forgot to mention about the uh, receiver is I'm using the long antennas. I believe they're like 120 millimeters long. Not the extra extended, but just the regular extended. That seems to be about the right length for me to, to be able to uh, feed these Immortal T's in, in between the uh, arm trusses, like so, to uh, give it a little bit further clearance away from the propellers, which I am going to be having all on the bottom here. And then uh, I can add a zip tie to this part of the post and then zip tie the mortal T to the arm. But we'll do that later. At this point in time, you can um, install your motors and that would be also good to test out the ESC to make sure the ESC is working before we continue with the rest of the build like the uh, DJI Air Unit or whatever VTX you have. Before proceeding with installing the motors, it's important to consider what kind of uh, setup you're gonna be running. So this is the front of the drone, this is the back of the drone. All four of my motors are gonna be inverted. They're all gonna be pusher. And the reason why is because I'm doing eight inch props and eight inch props only fit on the bottom, they don't fit on the top. If you are going to do seven inch, I recommend you do the same, all four pusher. If you do six inch, I recommend you have the front ones pointing downward, pusher mode, and then the rear ones um, facing upward in polar mode. And that will give you really good acrobatic ability. Each motor is installed using two uh, mounting plates and uh, some M3 by 18 millimeter socket head screws. Okay, so the procedure for doing this is uh, because these arms are kind of stretched inward, you can just notch the motor mounts into place and uh, spread apart the arms until you're able to uh, um, engage the little notches in the carbon. Then you can flip it over and install the other one. Just make sure that uh, the angle is matching the angle of the arms. Okay, great. And then we take uh, these M3 by 18 millimeter socket head screws, run it through the top of the motor plates like this, and then install the motor and line up that hole and just tighten it down very loosely just so it stays in place. Then get uh, some more Loctite and another screw, secure another hole. Two more to go. Okay, so now we can start tightening and uh, you can do like a diagonal pattern of tightening to make sure everything's even. Don't tighten 100% all the way yet. Uh, get them nice and snug. Now these, these two screws can actually be tightened more because they're closer to the edge of the screw hole so it's not gonna bend the carbon as much. And then these rear two um, screws right here they don't need to be tightened quite as much because if you do, um, you'll actually uh, bend the carbon fiber a little too much. You can already see the carbon fiber starting to bend. That's perfectly okay. Uh, it's not gonna hurt anything or cause any vibration issues. It's just, uh, just how it is. Um, so yeah, they don't need to be super, super duper tight because the Loctite will um, work wonders for preventing them from falling out. So, uh, repeat that for the other three motors. All right, now it's starting to look like a drone. Uh, that's pretty cool. You can bend it and flex it now at this point and uh, feel how rigid it is and see how you like it. Next, um, let's go ahead and start securing these motor wires. 
And the way I do it is I start with this edge or this side first. I zip tie the motor wire to the side of the, the inner longer arm. And uh, I fold the motors or the motor wires like so. You don't have to cinch it down super tight. Don't use pliers to tighten it. Just enough so it's going to hold it in place. And it's important to make sure that the motor wires uh, stay in line or below the carbon fiber so that if the propeller ever contacts the arm, it's not going to cut through your motor wires. And then I do a second one uh, up here and just make sure the motor wires stay aligned and in a row. And you can place this zip tie about this far up the arm and tighten that one down as well. And make sure that you don't have any looseness here. You don't want motor wire flopping around. And I'm gonna go ahead and trim that one too. Okay, so you can repeat that for the other uh, three motors. Okay, I did that. And you know what? I'm actually gonna throw a third zip tie um, right in the middle of the arm just to prevent it from flopping it around. Okay, at this point you can start cutting your motor wires to the correct length and stripping them and then soldering them to your ESC. Uh, for reference, I um, use the fat chisel tip and 400 degrees Celsius for my temperatures. So go ahead and install those motor wires. Okay, I got my motors soldered up and uh, now would be another good time to do a uh, uh, explosion test for your drone just to make sure you didn't um, drop any solder balls in there or wire something poorly. So uh, let's connect the battery again. Okay, that's great. Flight controller seems to be arming the motors and uh, yeah, everything seems to be not exploding. That's great. Okay, let's secure these uh, dangling <laughs> Mortal T antennas. The way I'm going to do it is actually fish them in between the uh, lower and upper portions of each arm. And then I'm going to zip tie it to um, this part of the arm. And that will give it a good amount of distance uh, away from the propeller so it has less chance of getting chewed up there. And uh, yeah, I'm going to put a zip tie right here and here. We'll see how that goes. After lots of trial and error, this is the uh, uh, attachment regime that I came up with. I actually used four zip ties for each Immortal T antenna. One goes around the arm and then the other wraps around the very tip of the Immortal T. Additionally, you can add yet another zip tie just wrapped around the wire of the Immortal T, which acts as kind of like a nut, preventing the Immortal T from slipping back and forth this way and that way. Uh, yeah, pretty excessive, <laughs> six zip ties per Immortal T, but you know what? It's not very heavy and it's nice and secure. Kind of a compromise you have to make with this kind of frame design and the weird design of the Immortal T antenna too. If you have any better way to mount the Immortal T antenna, definitely let us know in the comments below. Okay, so finishing touch for the Immortal T. I'm gonna pre-bend a zip tie like this into a hook shape. Wrap it around the carbon fiber pillar here to uh, take up the extra slack so the Immortal T antenna doesn't get caught in the propellers. And be sure to secure the other Immortal T antenna as well if you're running diversity. Okay, so if you're using the DJI O3 Air Unit or perhaps the Cadex Vista, first off, I don't recommend using the Cadex Vista for a build like this. I recommend a VTX with diversity antennas. But um, yeah, so if you're using the O3 Air Unit, what you're going to do is install these uh, 5 millimeter male-female standoffs instead of just plain old um, M3 nylon hex nuts. To mount the O3 air unit to this uh, carbon fiber VTX plate, um, included in your kit are these tiny little, I think they're M1.7, um, and screws. So what you do is you actually remove the, uh, the antenna 
um, clip on the O3 air unit and the two other small screws and they're black and you can replace them with these longer screws and you feed these screws through the 25 by 25 uh, millimeter mounting holes in these corners and then you screw them up into the O3 air unit and just make sure with your stack set up that you have uh, plenty of clearance the most crucial clearance is actually between your flight controller and ESC at least a three millimeter gap between the two. Mostly you want a gap so that the ESC has enough cooling. Once you have your uh, cube style uh, VTX installed like your O3 air unit then you can install these uh, M3 nylon hex nuts. But for my case I'm um, using the OG air unit. This guy and my favorite camera is the Cadex uh, Nebula Pro. So for me, since this uh, air unit will be attached to the bottom plate, all I need to do to finish off my flight stack is a, um, install these M3 nylon nuts. For now, I gotta figure out how to mount this VTX. So the way is to mount it to the bottom plate. And uh, I wanna align it such that this rear edge is aligned with uh, this line right here and the front edge is aligned with this line right here. But we'll be applying the uh, double-sided adhesive here and here. So I just uh, cleaned both surfaces and uh, I'm applying the VHB tape here and now I can stick it on right about there. I'm gonna squeeze and hold that for 10 seconds. Okay, the way I um, secure the uh, VTX to the bottom plate more thoroughly is using daisy chaining two zip ties together. There are suspenders for your DJI air unit. Okay, we're gonna mount the bottom plate before doing that, I've got to connect up my uh, uh, wire plug thing. Okay, I heard that glorious little click. And I'm just gonna wrap up and coil this wire randomly as I set this bottom place plate on. Bend the carbon fiber a little bit to get it to go. And uh, make sure your camera uh, cable is running between the fan and the bottom plate so it won't get pinched or anything there's plenty of clearance to secure the uh, bottom plate we need to throw on these joists but how are they connected well we got to use a, a 20 millimeter m3 standoff this is silver not black and uh, insert it into this tpu piece that looks like this this is actually a uh, a bumper and you can do the same for the uh, the other piece as well. Just slide that right in there. You'll align the bumper with the rest of the frame like that. It kind of just seats into place perfectly. We can use our famous M3 by 8 millimeter socket head screw. Insert it through the uh, joist here and then into the standoff hole. Okay. Repeat for the other side. Okay, flip it around and same process. Okay, once you have all those screws in there, you can go ahead and start tightening them against each other. Um, next, we can install these little landing feet, which also double as antenna mounts. So you can just press that on there like that. Okay, that went on well. And uh, when mounting your antennas, what you do is you put your antenna cable, you kind of uh, pinch it using that little like uh, flap, and then you can run zip ties through these holes, and I recommend using two zip ties. And then that way your antenna will be uh, in a pretty good location, pretty far away from the camera. 
not quite as good as having uh, long range extensions like this, but still the video will be quite good. Okay, let's mount up our uh, FPV camera. To do this, um, what you're gonna do is uh, use these little TPU um, shims. I have a 19 by 19 camera. If you're using the O3 air unit, it just fits directly into the carbon fiber side plates, no problems. Um, but since this camera is a little narrower, we need a little bit of a shimmy. And your kit should come with some uh, stainless steel or silver uh, M2 by 5 millimeter length screws, just like these, except they'll be silver. And um, I should include four since the O3 air unit needs four screws. But since this is a Caddx camera, um, we only need two screws. Bingo! Okay, so these uh, TPU shims, they also help with uh, gripping the camera so that you can tighten down the screws but still be able to uh, adjust the camera tilt by, by finger. And I'm going to throw a zip tie in here um, to make sure this uh, camera cable doesn't become so loose that it gets into the propellers. You want to have everything be very secured and nothing dangling out uh, when you're using 8-inch propellers. If you're using antenna extensions for long range, uh, you'll want to install these little uh, VTX SMA mounts. And they are secured using a um, 8 millimeter long M3 countersunk screw that goes in through this side of the uh, little mount. And then it screws directly into some press nuts. And I screw it in up until the point, um, like at at this approximate angle here. And I just keep on screwing it in. And it might swivel a little bit, that's okay. And uh, you just gotta make sure that the uh, hexagon portion clears the frame so that you can insert the uh, antenna pigtail. And this can be tightened with a uh, propeller socket driver, actually. So it should look like this now. Next, we're going to prepare the uh, battery quick release mechanism that utilizes these three press nut holes in the top plate. So um, get a M3 by 10 millimeter um, countersunk screw and insert it into one of these, uh, I call them battery studs. And uh, what you want to do next is actually get some uh, grease. You can use uh, Vaseline, you can use lithium grease or silicone grease. And the way I do this is uh, I lube up end of a cutoff Q-tip with plenty. You don't need to be shy about this. And just uh, go around and lube up the uh, internal, external, whatever surface of the, uh, the bushing or the, the stud. And then after doing that, apply a generous amount of Loctite to the uh, exposed screw and insert that whole assembly into the uh, left two uh, press nuts. And then tighten down just a little bit because we're going to be adjusting that later. All right, next I'm going to show you how to uh, install your LiPo battery onto the uh, quick release plate. So the orientation that you want to um, do it is note that one side of um, this plate is chamfered. You can see that's a soft edge. So we want that to be um, the, the edge that the tape wraps around. So flip that over and then your battery position, you want it such that the uh, main battery lead is um, facing downward, so it's closer to where the plug will be. In case you have any short wire leads, sometimes it can be a bit of a stretch and it makes it easier if your battery lead is on the bottom. So this is the orientation that you want right here. And notice that the chamfers are right here and right here. Okay, now that we've defined our orientation, you can put your, uh, your sticky pads on these portions of the plate and then set down your battery and align it exactly how you want it. And you may need to uh, do some trial and error to find the perfect position for your battery for your ideal setup. Uh, the most common lens you'll be using and the 
the you know the most common battery weight you'll be using i tend to just put the battery right in the middle and that works out reasonably well and so just take your uh, fiberglass strapping tape which is sold separately on my website and just wrap that around and it doesn't have to be super tight on the first pass just enough to get it to stick and then as you go further on the second pass you can start cinching it down and let's do a third pass and finally a fourth pass all right so repeat that step for the other side so now you've got at least one battery with the uh, battery plate on next let's suit up the uh, drone so it can accept these plates okay next get one of your batteries and uh, cl close it onto these studs and click it onto place it already seems to be a pretty good tension the beauty of uh, using these tpu uh, studs is that the diameter of them is adjustable so you can tighten down to make them wider or loosen to make them more narrow so what you can do is test each one individually that one's a little too easy so maybe i need to tighten it a bit okay that's good and the next one trying that one individually I'm going to tighten it down. Okay, that's much better. So now when we engage both of these, it's nice and well locked into place. Okay, and the final part of the battery quick release mechanism is this M3 by eight millimeter thumb screw that goes right in here in the third press nut, and you just lock that into place. So to uh, release it, I find it easier to loosen it with my left hand and then take my right hand to kind of squeeze it and pop it off like that. And to insert it, I just brace my fingers against the arms and just push in like that and then tighten down the nut. Okay, now that you've got your drone pretty much set up, um, now's the time to go into beta flight and configure everything, make sure your motor directions are all good, um, your uh, flight controller orientation is correctly set. Usually it's 180 degrees roll, things like that. And uh, do some test flights. Um, one thing to make sure of is uh, if you're using 8 inch props, you'll want to have usually drastically different filters than what you would use on 6 and 7 inch. Uh, once you get up to 8 inch, the RPM of the prop slows way down and you're going to need to adjust your RPM filter and your low pass filters for sure and probably even your dynamic notch filter in order to prevent flyaways so you can refer to my rotor builds page for screenshots of my uh, pid tune that i've gotten for my eight inch setup now that you've completed your test flights and you know that this uh, drone isn't going to fly away on you let's go ahead and remove the top plate and propellers and antennas so that we can begin the installation of the camera motherboard. Uh, let's first remove these SMA mounts and I actually find it's easier to remove the uh, M3 screw and just keep the 3D print attached to the antenna. Okay, before removing these M2.5 screws, uh, it's a good idea to loosen the uh, M3 screws, the socket head screws that are holding each arm and this just relieves the tension on all of the screws which is pulling the arms inward and will make it easier to uh, remove the screws and reinstall them later so go ahead and work your way all the way around the drone um, loosening each uh, m3 arm screw okay now that that's finished we can go ahead and start unscrewing the uh, 2.5 millimeter screws that are holding the top plate on. And lastly, let's do the uh, M2 screws. Okay, and um, at this point you should be able to uh, kind of pinch between the arm and the top plate in order to uh, gently notch it, denotch it. Very gentle. 
Okay, we got a nice beautiful open cavity waiting for our PCB. Let's start that operation now. Okay, so it's time to do a little bit of soldering in order to get our main motherboard situated and ready for installation. So make sure you have a, a fine tip installed on your soldering iron. And uh, for all these operations, you'll want to set your temperature to 350 degrees Celsius. So the most important piece here is this power um, connector. This is what feeds power to the camera. This is what directly interfaces with the camera. Um, what you want to do is actually clip these two center wires and uh, forget about them, don't need them. <laughs> the remaining wires are the power, the positive and negative. Remember this and mark it on the side with a silver sharpie or something. But uh, these right two wires are ground. These left two wires, these are positive. So remember that. While the connector is facing upward, not this side, but this side. When it's facing upward like this, these right two wires are ground, these left two wires are the positive. So now, um, the length of these wires is already uh, perfect for your needs. All you have to do is uh, strip the ends and tin them. Okay, um, it makes it easier if you have some helping hands to grip this uh, power distribution board, basically what it is. So I'm going to uh, um, apply some flux to these solder pads, these four solder pads. And remember what I said earlier, um, this is the ground. So we want to actually flip this connector over like that and then connect these two wires to the ground, the minus, and then these two wires to the plus. So um, to make this a little easier, you can actually um, first get some solder onto your soldering iron and then insert the uh, uh, two cables into the holes and then apply the uh, solder. And let's repeat it for the ground. And I'm gonna clean up these solder joints with some isopropyl alcohol. So this is what it should look like, um, connected properly. The ground goes to ground, positive goes to positive. Next up, uh, we're gonna prepare our fan. So um, normally there's a little plastic tab that holds this wire in and it's quite difficult to remove the wire without causing damage to either the wire or pulling on these joints. So it's actually better just to take your side cutters and clip off that little bit of plastic so that you can easily re um, free the wire. Okay, so once that's done, you want to trim this wire to a specific length. I find that like 60 millimeters is pretty good and uh, strip these wires and tin them. Once that's done, um, let's uh, solder these to the PCB here. Uh, same strategy as before. That's looking pretty good. Okay, once again, clean that up and give it a final cleaning, uh, especially the back side. You wanna make sure this is free of any kind of like residue or sap-like um, substances that could impede the um, adhesion of the double-sided tape to the main motherboard of the Blackmagic camera. Okay, you can set this aside for now and we'll move on to the next portion. Okay, next up we're going to install the Bluetooth module. Um, what it's gonna do is rest on top of these two inductors and then um, kind of sit into that crevice on the CFAST card reader. Uh, to make, make it actually stick there, we're gonna use our trusty VHB tape and cut tiny little strips and uh, stick it into place. So, let's start with the inductors first. Um, cut a thin strip like this and then cut two small squares. And stick these squares onto each inductor 
and um, ever so gently hold them in place for like 10 seconds to make sure the adhesive uh, fully bonds to the top of the inductors. Don't press very hard at all. You don't want to bend your PCB. Okay, next up is a thin strip of tape right on this edge. So, uh, you can cut uh, a very thin slice, thin, just like that, just a little tiny strip. And then what you're gonna do is place it um, sideways against the metal. Just like that. And uh, you can use the edge of your fingernail or a um, spudger tool, whatever, to uh, apply pressure so that it sticks into place. Okay, now we can uh, use our tweezers to uh, pe carefully peel off the backing. And you're going to align your Bluetooth module in this position. Walk it into that corner and slap it right down. So you can push that way and down. I'll put some very slight, even pressure and hold that for like 30 seconds. We can leave this little ribbon cable unattached for now. Next, we're gonna install the LCD extension um, PCB adapter. So to do this, um, this is a little bit different from the previous models of the Blackmagic camera. This is a rigid PCB, so as such, um, it should be rigidly connected to the, um, the rest of the motherboard. We will be using this uh, VHB tape, but in addition, we're gonna be um, actually fastening it down using a screw. So uh, first, let's get the VHB tape prepared. You're going to be placing this tape in this area of the PCB, but you want to actually double up this tape so that it's uh, twice the thickness. So I'm gonna cut a roughly a square, just one inch by one inch and then I'm gonna fold it in half so that instead of a half millimeter gap, we have a one millimeter gap or thickness of the adhesive. And then I'm going to peel off like that. And I'm gonna stick that right there and just uh, gently press. And you can press from the backside because you have some uh, metal shielding. So gently press that and hold. Next up, you wanna have these small pieces uh, handy. So this little plastic or 3D printed uh, shoulder washer uh, gets inserted into uh, the PCB hole. Take one of your 20 millimeter M2 socket head screws and insert a uh, M2.5 uh, washer. It's an oversized washer. Run this screw through the top and I lost my shoulder washer, so I'm going to reinsert the shoulder washer such that the, uh, uh, the shoulder is oriented so that it kind of mates with the hole in the PCB. Remove the uh, adhesive from the backing, and then we're gonna take this PCB and place the screw through the hole. Make sure that uh, connector there is aligned first and foremost, and uh, snap that connector into place by pinching it. And uh, we got a little bit of an angle going on here, so that's okay. That's just all part of the, uh, the fitment. And then you can gently squeeze on the connector to make sure that's fully seated. And then uh, gently press down right here in order to uh, engage the adhesive and hold that for like 30 seconds. And uh, just make sure your shoulder washer is properly aligned. And then you can um, install a tiny little M2 hex nut. Then get your 1.5 millimeter hex driver, insert it into the uh, socket screw there. Hold the other end with a uh, pair of needle nose pliers and screw that down. And uh, screw it down until you feel some resistance, like it's bottoming out, and then just a tad bit more. So that's an important step for making this connector rigidly connected to the rest of the motherboard. Okay, next up is the top buttons assembly. This belongs right here. 
on the PCB. But we're going to stick it there with some, once again, double-sided tape. Just a single layer of this uh, VHB tape. Or any other mounting tape that's approximately half a millimeter in thickness. So I'm just going to cut this to the same width as the top button's um, PCB and cut it to the same length. And I'm going to stick it directly to the PCB. And uh, hold that in place until the uh, adhesive is fully activated. Then go ahead and attempt to uh, peel off the backing from the adhesive. Attempt was successful. Okay, and um, now for alignment. This is important, really important. The corner that we're going to align this rectangle onto this rectangle is this corner. So we want this edge to be aligned perfectly with this edge. This edge to be aligned perfectly with this edge. So follow along with me as I go on this alignment journey. So I'm just using my fingernails uh, to kind of feel it, feel the alignment. Okay, once you're satisfied with that, um, if you do feel like it's off-center, you should peel it off immediately before the adhesive activates too far. So you can press that down and uh, let that bond for a few seconds. Cool. Alright, next um, we're going to use this 22-pin FFC cable that's included with your kit. And um, it's 100 millimeters. By the way, it's a very common cable if you ever need to replace it. So, uh, the way this works is we're going to plug in the blue here and plug in the blue facing upward here. And to do that, we kind of have to fold it a little bit, like origami. So make sure this black lever is lifted upward. Use a fingernail or something in order to uh, make sure the, uh, the, the ribbon cable is fully inserted. And then you can lock down that black latch. Then from this point on, we're going to insert our uh, blue tab facing upward into this connector. Use a fingernail to uh, push it in all the way. Hold it in place while you throw that latch down. Okay, and um, that looks a little dweepy. So what we're going to do is just fold this up and you can actually crease it. It's fine. You can fold it once and it will uh, it will not destroy the circuit or anything like that. And then you can do a 45 degree fold again. And just try to keep everything uh, at 45 degrees and 90 degrees uh, folds. And then you can just gently push that down, crease it. It's okay to crease just one time. Okay, this is the green LED which uh, shows you whether the camera's on or off. This is the red LED which tells you if it's recording. It's much less bright than the green LED, that's why there's a light pipe that will be right on top of this red LED to uh, transmit that light um, to the outer buttons so you can see that more easily during the daytime even. Okay, next is the uh, smaller 8 pin and this one I believe is uh, 50 millimeters long so it's another common size. Make sure both of these black latches are lifted up and uh, we're gonna insert this into the tally connector. Okay so insert that and then lock it down and then for this one it helps to uh, make this in initial fold right here. Just fold that 45 degrees Okay, so after creasing that 45 degree angle, we're now going to uh, fold it this way, uh, kind of counterintuitively. And we're going to fold it such that um, it's aligned with the other connector. So you can actually make another 45 degree angle crease, just like that. And then we're going to make another fold this way upward. So this gives us enough clearance or slack in order to insert the uh, the ribbon cable into the connector. 
So now it's easy to push in. And then I can throw this latch down. And you can go ahead and press that down lightly to uh, enhance the crease. And that should be good to go for the top buttons. And uh, one thing to consider is uh, if you ever want to have remote recording or turning your camera on and off, you can use these uh, pens here. This is the on-off pens. They're actually labeled as such, but the cable is covering it. And these record pens. Um, the way you start the record pens is you have to short them somehow. Usually flight controllers can achieve this by using the buzzer pad, by connecting one pad to buzzer negative, and then the other pad to ground. So when you hit the buzzer, it shorts your flight controller shorts buzzer negative to ground, thus connecting it to ground and shorting these two pads, which will initiate the record function. And then for the on off, um, once again, it's uh, shorting these two pads because uh, these are pins two and three. So as long as those are shorted and stay shorted, the camera remains on. As, as soon as those two pins are disconnected, the camera shuts off. Okay, let's flip this thing over to the back side. And now we can finally install our cute little triangular power distribution board. I said that weird. <laughs> Okay, so um, this triangle fits in place right there. See, look, it has its own little home. Very cute. We can attach it using, once again, our very favorite mountain tape. Uh, so I'm going to cut a 45 degree angle with this tape. I'm just going to cut something like this. And the rest is freestyle. So uh, you just kind of got to eyeball it. Stick that to the back side. Then go ahead and peel off that backing. And let's stick this into place right on that neat little triangular clearing on the PCB. Okay, once that's on there, then you can just gently pinch it to uh, make sure the adhesive is bonding. Okay, we're in the home stretch of preparing our main motherboard for installation into the drone. Next, we've got to install the rest of these um, 20 millimeter M2 screws. But before we can do that, we got to prepare our soft mounting. So this uh, 1 8 inch by 1 16 inch silicone tubing is provided in your kit. And what I want you to do is uh, cut little small lengths of it to act as spacers when installing these screws. Okay, so the lengths that you'll need are five lengths of 10 millimeter. And I find it easier to just use one of these uh, box cutters here. And then you'll need one length of eight millimeter tubing. And that one is for this screw because it's got a little extra space taken up by this um, M2 hex nut. And you can go ahead and stick that eight millimeter tube onto this particular screw right now so you don't forget it or wonder why it's there. And just slide that on there, just like that. Next, we need to have five five millimeter length tubings. So let's cut those out. Okay, that's it for the tubing. Next, install uh, the five millimeter length of tubing onto each of the remaining five uh, 20 millimeter M2 screws. Next, uh, once you have the little small section of tubing on all the screws, uh, run them through the holes so that they're facing the same direction as the, uh, this screw here. And then install the uh, 10 millimeter length of tubing onto the screw. And just be gentle and careful at this process. Uh, definitely make sure you have plenty of space and you are getting the optimum positioning for your fingers and supporting the PCB. There we go, just like that. Okay, so now that you've got these screws all settled in there, um, just give them a little bit of a push 
uh, to make sure that the are fully seated and that the uh, small section of silicone is being properly squished down. And then uh, take this ribbon cable, the Bluetooth one, and you can install it into its corresponding connector. And this board is ready for installation. And uh, remove the top buttons for now and the uh, connector panel. So this PCB is going to be oriented like so. And it may be a good idea just to insert the fan um, just to check for fitment. So I'm just going to push it in and I can tell, yeah, that's going to be a good fit when I push it in uh, during installation for realsies. So you can take that back out. And this PCB, you want to flip it over and set it next to the drone. Um, because we're going to solder this 12 volt power to the camera. And make sure at some point you have used a multimeter to test the uh, polarity and voltage of this power source before soldering it up to the camera. Uh, I've already stripped these wires, but I'm going to add some flux and some solder to get them nice and tin so we have a trouble-free soldering experience to the uh, um, motherboard PCB. And uh, once again, my soldering iron is set to 350 degrees Celsius. Okay, so um, this drone sits a little high, so I'm actually going to put down a piece of tape here as a stepping stool for our short little um, black magic cage. And then I'm going to angle it this way a little bit because we want to solder the wire such that it curves in a natural way and I'm going to be soldering it into the ports like so. I'm going to add some uh, flux. And I'm now going to solder the uh, positive one first since it's further away from me. Both of those joints look very strong. So I'm going to reach in here with a toothbrush and isopropyl alcohol and just clean up. Okay, and then I'm going to gently choreograph a dance in a purette and remove this piece of tape. And now we can begin installation of the, uh, the camera. Uh, before attempting this, make sure you have your M2 nylock nuts and some kind of a hex driver or uh, needle nose pliers. I prefer to use this guy, this tiny little socket driver, and a uh, 1.5 millimeter hex driver handy. I'm going to pick this up and move this SMA extension out of the way. You don't belong here anymore. And then I'm going to just shove the fan into the uh, fan grommet, just like this. Press that down there gently. Okay. And then I'm going to maneuver the power wire off to the right and then line up the holes with the M2 screws. And it looks like everything kind of just magically seated into place there. So the um, first screw I usually worry about is the LCD extension screw. So what I'm going to do is tilt the whole drone sideways and then holding on to the PCB I'm going to uh, use my fingers, work on this uh, M2 nylon nut. It's a very small part. Looks like I got it. And I'm going to just tighten it down just enough such that the uh, nylon part of the nut activates or touches the uh, thread on the screw. And next, an easy screw to approach is uh, this far side over here. We can actually take a uh, one and a half millimeter hex driver, insert it into the screw onto the back side, then place the screw here, and then twist the screwdriver to engage the threads of the nylock nut. And we only need to go so far as the nylon portion until we hit that. Okay, let's get another. And um, once again, you can use this screwdriver as a uh, twisting tool 
in order to engage the threads of the nylon nut. Let's work on the other side. So let's uh, carefully tilt it over, holding on to the PCB or the screws, and uh, let's choose an easy screw first, get that into place, grab a uh, nylock nut, and then screw it in from the top. Okay, so that's locked in place, and then let's do the far side. Push down a little bit in order to engage those threads. Okay, that one's good. And then this screw is probably the more difficult one because it's kind of hidden among these motor wires, so you just kind of got to shove the motor wires out of the way and uh, screw that in. At this point, you can go ahead and start tightening these screws. The way you tighten them is so far as the screw becomes level with the head of the nut, just like that. And let's repeat that for the far side. And it's okay to actually extend a little bit past, if I remember correctly now, like half a millimeter or so past the nut. Okay, now that your PCB is bolted down, and uh, just double check that the connector panel um, slots into place and lines up with all of the ports on the back. And uh, you wanna make sure that the bottom metal shielding of the PCB has a little bit of a gap between the bottom plate, like anywhere from half a milli millimeter to a millimeter. And then double checking the uh, front of the, the camera the CFAST card reader should not be touching the bottom plate. There should be a little bit of a gap there. And then another thing to inspect is the buttons panel. Uh, make sure that you can, well first, have the switch aligned with the uh, tactile switch. The micro switch is in the forward position. The tactile switch is as well. So use those slots to put it in there. And then let's take a look. Lining up just fine. Oh yeah, and then the little light pipe there being partially blocked by the ribbon cable, but it still directs the light enough so you can see the record function. Okay, we're getting closer. Now that the board is secured to the bottom cage, let's uh, start thinking about the sensor ribbon cable. For this sensor ribbon cable, you have to construct it a little bit, um, but this makes it sacrificial because these FFC cables are very easy to replace and uh, procure. To assemble one of these guys, um, we have two different lengths of FFC cable. One is 120 and the other is 100 millimeters in length. The 100 millimeter length one, you can insert it into the uh, latch connector. You insert it into the connector, latch it down, and then you take the longer 120 millimeter one, insert it into the connector. You can use a fingernail too to make sure uh, you're pressing up on that stiffener while latching it down. Okay, this is one side of our sensor. Next, uh, you have these 3D printed uh, backers and the one with the little notch in it, this one's for the sensor side. So we'll set that aside for now. The one that's like a, just a regular rectangle that's for the motherboard side. So what we do is uh, we have to arrange it so that the uh, little cutouts that are 3D printed into it match up with the uh, components on the board, these little tiny resistors. So looking at it here, uh, we have a big row of uh, capacitors or resistors or something up here. Um, that would match up with uh, this long row or long channel in the bottom here. So. The, uh, you can just do a test fit to make sure that it actually fits on there, kind of flush. Okay, that's good. And then we take this and we flip it over and place it on the uh, sensor ribbon cable in this orientation. And you kind of got to work it around. It's made of TPU, so it has a bit of stretch to it. And so just uh, wrap it around that socket connector. Great. Um, so that's kind of hugging itself onto the uh, female connector there. And now we can just take this and plop it onto the uh, mezzanine connector. And when doing this, uh, it's best to back it up from the opposite side using a, a pinky or something. 
and uh, press it down until you hear that click. There may not be an audible click. And then do a visual inspection to make sure that the uh, backing is sitting flush against the PCB on both sides. The purpose of these 3D printed uh, backings is to prevent the uh, connector from wiggling around and losing contact over time from um, just motion. Okay, so the next step is preparing the folds for routing the uh, cable. So we're gonna be plugging in the other side now, insert that 100 millimeter ribbon cable, and then insert the 120 millimeter ribbon cable, and latch that down. That won't be a final latch, we'll be taking this off later so that we can feed it through the top plate. And so now, um, this part is, uh, what I recommend is using some kind of tape in order to protect the FFC from getting cut on the carbon fiber. I recommend this Tessa um, 21035 tape. It's uh, very abrasion resistant. And so what you can do is cut off a length of it about 60 millimeters long with the sensor cable nice and straight. Uh, I'm going to wrap it around. You kind of have to do two sides, one slice for each side. And let's get another piece, okay, and fold that around. And double check the other side to make sure that looks uh, aligned properly. Okay, so these two ribbons are kind of joined together. What we want is for the uh, sensor to be sitting up in this position because it's going to be pivoting as you change the angle of the, of the lens. So to accomplish this, uh, we need to actually fold the FFC cables, and you can just slightly crease it like this. It's okay to crease it. And then we're doing like another fold like this in order to um, achieve the kind of position. So what I did is I just, uh, I'll do that again. So I fold this way, and then I kind of twist it, and then I smash it down like that. And uh, this will be further held in place by the top plate once that's installed. So now the sensor ribbon cable is in the perfect position to be able to bend back and forth as you change the tilt of the camera. And you don't need to like crease it super hard or anything like origami style, just enough to get it into the right position. Okay, so we're ready for our top plate installation. But first, uh, the most important thing, Make sure your sensor ribbon cable is reinstalled. And uh, also check your uh, buttons panel. Have the micro switch in the forward position. Have the buttons panel in the forward position. Slot it into place. And make sure that the little slot on the tactile switch aligns with the micro switch. And then make sure that your uh, connector panel uh, slots into place. And uh, make sure that all the ports line up just fine. And you can also inspect that the CFast card shielding is not touching the bottom plate. There's a little bit of a gap. And same for the shielding on the back side. Make sure there's a little bit of a gap there. Okay, so let's install this thing. So these uh, sensor ribbon cables can slot through this cutout right here. And uh, the way we've bended it, it helps us maneuver into place as we desired. And then we can line up the top plate with the notches uh, of the arms. So I'm just gonna press slowly all around the drone and then uh, work my way toward the back end of the drone. Oh, it looks like I'm getting hung up a little bit. It's actually the buttons panel. I think that is uh, preventing me from further progress. So I'm just gonna make sure that all uh, is lined up. Okay, so that's looking good now. Okay, now going back to the rear portion, Okay, so the rear portion is being quite stubborn. Chances are it's because the connector plate is not perfectly lined up. So uh, get in there close with your googly eye magnifying glasses or whatever to make sure that uh, one millimeter plate is notched in there. And uh, looks like we got it. You just got to press down some more and there it went. Okay, cool. And now you can go around and kind of pinch it gently to make sure all of the uh, notches are fully engaged. And then you can go ahead and install these uh, M2.5 millimeter screws. And when installing these screws, uh, don't tighten them down all the way because we've got to tighten the uh, three millimeter screw on the side first.
Okay, M2.5 screws are all installed. Now we can go ahead and tighten the M3 screws from the side. Okay, now that those are tight, we can now tighten the uh, top plate screws. Don't tighten these ones yet because these are the side plate screws, which we will be installing next very soon. And go ahead and just double check that the bottom side of the T-bracket screws are all tightened as well. Okay, now is a good time to go ahead and install the uh, other half of your sensor ribbon cable assembly uh, because there is no, you know, module, sensor module attached to the drone yet. So to do this, uh, I find it's easiest to make sure both latches are seated upward so they're open. And then uh, I'm just going to start with the inner ribbon cable first, and I'm just holding onto the cable by holding onto this one, and then pulling upward a little bit to force it into the connector. And then I can close that latch down, and just running a fingernail over it to make sure it's fully seated. And then for this top one, um, I'm actually going to bend the cable a little bit to create clearance, and then align it with the connector, and then bend it back so that it kind of forces the ribbon cable in there. And then I'm using a fingernail. Use uh, the edge of the stiffener here to push that ribbon cable fully into place. And then simultaneously uh, push that latch down. And that should be good to go. Just make sure that the uh, little contacts here on the socket are nice and clean. You can use a squeeze bulb. Okay, we uh, do have these little dangly bits. I, I guess I can go ahead and um, install the SMA mounts. Cool. To install the side plates now, uh, make sure that uh, I think we can just loosen the top M2 screw for this T bracket. It might be okay if the bottom one is tightened all the way. You might have to loosen it later though. Um, so for these, you can just kind of slot them into place from the side between the two armlets. And uh, you might have to loosen this screw and this screw too, but for me, it seems like it didn't matter. And then um, you'll need a uh, M3 by eight millimeter socket head screw with plenty of Loctite. And uh, you can fish that screw in through the side and gently thread it into the T-bracket. Don't screw in all the way because next, now that it's you know, fully seated at least, I can go ahead and loosen the bottom screw just a little bit and then go back and tighten this M3 screw uh, the rest of the way, all the way down, and then tighten both M2.5 screws on either side, on the top and the bottom. Now repeat the same procedure for the other side. Good to go. All right, next up on the list of things to do is the lens mount. The first uh, thing to install is the IR filter. So hopefully you've kept it nice and clean during this time. And uh, you wanna insert it such that the, uh, the slightly smaller diameter portion of the lip uh, gets inserted first into the, uh, the receiver of the lens mount. And uh, don't touch it with your fingers, just use the microfiber towel to uh, press it in there. It should go in pretty easily. It's not like a super hard fit or anything like that. Okay, so give it a little rub for luck and uh, you can set that down now. Okay, so uh, I find it easier to fit this part in next, which retains the uh, IR filter. So just drop that into place and it should all line up pretty well. And then if you remember, uh, this one has this tiny small double zero Phillips screws, but they're the slightly longer ones. Screw those in. And don't screw it in all the way. Uh, wait till you uh, screw in the other side before you tighten both of them down. And just be very slow and deliberate with your movements for this part of the process because you don't want to uh, have the driver tip slip and crack your IR filter. Okay, and just be very gentle when tightening these down because you can uh, strip the plastic. Next is uh, this little lens communication port. 
there's a little slit in the bottom of the lens mount. You install that ribbon cable through, then you kind of have to slightly bend the ribbon cable as you press it down in there. And it goes right into place perfectly. So uh, you can set that down, grab another small screw, and all of these three screws are the same length. And let's start with this hole. Okay, not tightening down all the way yet. And the final small screw is uh, securing the um, lens release button. Just snug is good for that one. And then these ones you can go back and make sure they're tightened down all the way. All right, cool. If you have a squeeze bulb, uh, now's a good time to make sure there's no dust on either side. Next up, uh, we can install this little spring into this hole and make sure that is sitting upright. And then we can uh, put the little button on. That seems to be working okay. Next, this little uh, light shroud goes into place between the button and the rest of the uh, lens mount. And it kind of sits on top because the spring is pushing up on it. That's okay. And then um, this little spring clip ring thing uh, you align it such that the uh, little leaf springs are concave down and the uh, U-shaped notch aligns with the uh, button hole. And then you can use these holes to align it with those locating pins. And then what we do is we grab our front plate, our carbon fiber front plate, and we slip it over the top just like this. And all during the process I'm being careful not to touch the back of the IR filter with my little grubby finger there. And then we can take the uh, steel ring here and first get that button pin through that hole and then press it downward. Change your position a little bit so you can have a bit of more, bit more purchase. And then get these silver countersunk screws. Just get one of those started by hand and then you can go back in with a screwdriver to tighten it. Okay, so tighten it down, just barely snug, so that you can uh, go ahead and ease off and continue with the rest of the screws. And for the rest of the screws, don't tighten them down all the way. So uh, confirm that you can press the button just fine without any issues. Now you can start um, tightening these screws down all the way. There's a little bit of uh, looseness, just enough for me to maneuver the button into the center of the carbon fiber opening. And then I can tighten down all the way and just double check that it's still centered reasonably. Okay, it's looking pretty clean. So during this process, I did actually get a little bit of fingerprint on the uh, back of the IR filter. And uh, so I'm gonna show you how to clean that off. So to fix it, we're gonna use a Q-tip and some lens cleaning solution that I got from B&H. I think this is Tiffin lens cleaning solution. So just take a clean Q-tip and spray at a distance. You don't wanna saturate the Q-tip by any means. Just give it a misting so that it's just um, slightly moist. And then you're gonna go ahead and do little circles on the uh, glass and just confirm that you're actually getting some kind of moisture on the glass so that it's combating the greases and oils that have gotten onto it from your fingers or whatever. And then just do perform these tiny little circles. You don't wanna press hard, just a light touch. And then once you've smeared that liquid around enough, then you can twist the Q-tip slightly to reveal a more dry portion of the Q-tip. That will begin helping with the evaporation process. Okay, that looks pretty clean. And during that process, I realized now that um, there are some marks on the opposite side too that somehow got on there. That's no problem. We can use the other end of our Q-tip. Okay, so you might find that you have to uh, do quite a lot of circles in order to get those foggy looking smears to go away, but they eventually do. So keep at it and you'll get there. 
Okay, once you're satisfied with that, um, go ahead and use your bulb squeezer to uh, dust off the back end and the front end. Okay, you can take your uh, sensor uh, assembly and dust that off. Make sure there's no thing on that sensor. You want it to be brand spanking clear and then ensure that your uh, back end of your lens thing is also dust free. And um, remember these shims? Uh, don't worry about these for now. We're gonna put those in later. For now, we're just gonna install the sensor PCB right now. All right, so it's time to close this thing up. You can align it with these uh, two thin pins here and uh, it just kind of plops onto place. Not much to it. And in order to secure it, uh, we have these long screws that you kept when dis disassembling your uh, black magic. And at this stage, it may be prudent to uh, install the um, lens cap. So I'm gonna put that on. And then I can use the uh, Phillips number one driver to screw these three screws in. And make sure to give sufficient downward pressure so as not to strip the heads. And go slowly and take your time. Don't try to do one all the way at the same time. Um, do them in parts. This is actually one of the more um, risky operations because you're, you're applying a lot of force as you're screwing these in. And if you slip, you could potentially uh, destroy a precious small component. So uh, be vigilant and intentional. There may actually be a little bit of a gap when you screw these screws down. That's okay. Um, you don't want to like tighten the crap out of these uh, screws because you'll risk bending the PCB. There's a little bit of a gap here because there's actually meant to be shims um, in between here. We're just installing this sensor plate temporarily um, as we move on to the other components. And then eventually when we connect this via the sensor ribbon cable, we're going to pull this thing off and then install some shims, close it up, and do our infinity focus test. All right, so for mounting this uh, lens assembly to the cage, we'll be once again utilizing these handy dandy T brackets. These are M2.5 by six millimeter socket head screws, by the way. For fastening them to the front plate, we do want to use some Loctite to make sure they're not going anywhere. And um, let's begin that process just a little bit. We don't need a ton. And then you want to align the brackets um, like so. And don't need to get them perfectly aligned right now, just uh, in their general orientation. There we go. Just for now, for safekeeping, we can uh, attach our back plate. Uh, the back plate has these countersunk M3 holes. We have 20 by 20 and 30.5 by 30.5 hole spacing. This is for if you want to use a uh, external uh, flight controller for recording black box data. But as of uh, camera firmware 8.1, gyro data is recorded in BRAW, natively inside each clip. So you can use uh, DaVinci Resolve and the Gyro Flow plugin really easily. So um, you can just install it right away like that. Uh, but there is this piece. This piece is handy because if you have a, a GPS, if you want GPS, return to home and all that stuff, this is a good mounting location for it because it's further away from the main PCB, which uh, may produce some uh, uh, EMI and may interfere with the GPS uh, antenna. So uh, orient the part like so and notch it into these notches in the front plate and then um, for this part, the uh, center of this, I guess where these uh, X, this X intersects, this is gonna be right over the back of the sensor. And then we want these countersinks to be facing inward. So align those notches and uh, that's where we want it to be. Then you can get um, four more uh, M2.5 by six millimeter socket head screws. And there's no need for Loctite on these ones because we remove the back plate um, much more frequently. Okay, and you don't need to really tighten them down all the way because we tighten them down much further um, when installing this whole assembly onto the side plates. 
getting everything to line up, it actually helps to loosen these again. So yeah, it's a temporary hold for now. Okay, so our side plates are on. Now it's time to install the uh, sensor ribbon cable thingy. Uh, install the uh, stiffener backer thing in this position as shown. And then hook it onto these uh, ribbon cables here. So you wanna start with the 100 millimeter um, ribbon cable first. So I'm pressing that on there and latching it down. And then the other one is a little bit harder, but I, I just bend it backwards like this in order to make it reach down into the connector. And then I can bend it upward once it's uh, inside. So it might take a couple tries to get it lined up just perfectly. Okay, there we go. And I'm gonna bend it forward to let it push itself in there. Make sure it's all the way in and then latch it down. So this is good to go. I get an extra piece of uh, Tessa tape, stick in this piece of tape to cover up the connectors, which don't look the prettiest with the uh, white and blue <laughs> against the black. And uh, just using this piece of tape to, as like a, a modesty panel. That's what it is, modesty panel. And so I'm just creasing it around the sides of the ribbon cable in order to get it to hold. And then I'm just gonna rub my fingers all the way around to uh, get as much adherence of the uh, tape to the components down below. Next, um, get your lens mount and stick it between the two side shrouds. And we're gonna plug in this uh, connector here. There is a hole on the back of the sensor. I'm gonna use my pinky to brace it against the back of the PCB as I'm pushing the plug onto it. So putting that in and in this position, I find it easier to plug it in when it's really tilted far back like this. And then I'm gonna reach in there with my finger or a pinky and plug it in while bracing from the other side. And I heard a pretty audible click as I did that, so I'm pretty sure it is fully engaged, the connector. And then if there's any excess uh, sensor ribbon cable kind of bulging out of the hole, uh, tuck that back in as you align the T-brackets with the, uh, the holes that match up to it. So just tucking that in there as I line everything up. Okay, once you've got the uh, holes lined up, um, take your M3 by eight millimeter socket head screws with some Loctite, and we're gonna put those into the bottom M3 holes of the T-brackets. Okay, and I'm gonna swing the lens upward a little bit and install these two M3 by eight millimeter thumb screws. Tighten those down mildly. Go ahead and loosen all of the uh, M2.5 screws. And then go ahead and tighten the uh, M3 screws. And then re-tighten the M2.5 screws. Okay, and um, the uh, lens mount should be pretty stiff. If it's too stiff, you can loosen the M3 by eight millimeter screws a little bit. And because they have a good amount of Loctite, they'll stay reasonably in place. So just loosen up just a little bit to allow you to uh, move the camera. And then you can uh, cycle the camera a few times to get rid of any excess carbon fiber, splinters, and dust it off with a squeeze bulb to prevent any potentially conductive materials falling onto the PCB. Let that sit for now while the uh, Loctite um, dries. Okay, next for me, I'm using long range antennas, so uh, I'm just gonna install this. Before plugging in a battery to test if the uh, camera boots up or not, um, you should test for any short circuits. So to do that, set your multimeter to short circuit detection mode and insert it into the positive and negative terminals of your plug. And uh, there was a brief little squeak because it has zero resistance as the current is rushing in to fill the capacitor. So that's why you'll hear in an initial uh, beep. But after that, if it continues to stay um, not beeping, then you're good to go. And after you pass that test, uh, make sure to set your camera to off. Okay, and um, this just adds to the dramatic uh, tension as you're testing this out. And install your long range antennas if you're 
Using these SMA extensions, we don't want to damage our VTX by booting up without antennas. And then if you have a smoke stopper, plug that in. And then make sure the camera is set to off for a dramatic effect. And uh, let's plug it in. Okay, drone is booted up and everything. Now it's time to uh, turn on the camera. I see a green light, that's good. Okay, let's get started on the LCD monitor thing. So, um, the parts you'll need are this carbon fiber in addition to the buttons and the uh, button circuit for the LCD. It comes with the camera, one of the parts that you remove. And then also included in the kit is this custom PCB that I designed. And this is what uh, connects your LCD to a cable. So you can set this aside for now. First, let's get started on this little guy. If you haven't already done so, make sure you remove this circuit from the stainless steel backing using um, isopropyl alcohol and a heat gun. This part, uh, basically what you gotta do is line up the holes with uh, this backer with the holes of this part. That looks like it works. And this little ribbon cable is going in the same direction as these two tabs. So that's what we want. So um, what you gotta do is align it as best as you can, just looking through the, the holes. And then once you have it aligned, you can tape it down into place. And I'm using a Kapton tape. Uh, make sure that whatever tape you use, as long as you don't cover these contacts, you should be good. And if the tape is sufficiently uh, thin, And it doesn't have to have like gobs of tape on it to be super sturdy by any means because it's gonna be pressed down. Let's get our magical LSD or LCD. Fit this onto our board like so. And this is the orientation that you want. To secure the uh, screen into place, we're gonna be using some screws and little tabs and stuff like that. So uh, one of these first little tabs, you can take one of these and uh, line it up with the hole. Get an M2 by eight millimeter socket head screw and then run it through that hole and then through an M2 by 10 millimeter standoff and tighten that down by hand. Okay, and repeat the step for the other side. Let's use another one of these screen tabs and align it like so and secure it with a standoff. Okay, so these uh, little tabs should be pressing down on the rim of the LCD. Next, let's get another one of these M2 screws and uh, we're gonna put the, the buttons into place right here, such that they're uh, holding down the other end of the screen. Before putting on this piece, you need to insert these buttons. So insert them just like that, such that the little tabby tabs are aligned. And then you can return this to its rightful place in the universe. And then take another screw and uh, secure a standoff. And secure the other side with another standoff. Okay, and notice we chose the center standoffs. Um, the corner standoffs are actually gonna have little 3D printed bezels. So let's do that now. Okay, for these bezels, what you do is you just slip this same 10 millimeter standoff as all the rest of them. You slip that into this hole like that. So repeat that three more times. Okay, now that we have all four bezels with their standoffs inserted, um, take another one of these eight millimeter M2 socket head screws. You have to slide this bezel on, just like that. And then you can insert your uh, M2 screw and you can tighten that by hand and repeat that for the other three. All right, we've got all four of these little bezels on there. Now what we can do is uh, get to work on the monitor extension. What we have to do is um, uh, use double-sided sticky tape or mounting tape to stick it to the back of the LCD. To do this and get it aligned, it actually is helpful to uh, get this uh, top cover. You wanna match up the little chamfer there uh, with the connector, just like that. 
So you can install this just like that. Lift this little ribbon cable. And then I'm gonna insert the uh, monitor extension into its uh, position where it's supposed to be. And you can look at it from the top again, make sure that looks right to you. Well, the connector is kind of shoved into that little hole, I'm going to mark exactly where monitor extension should be positioned. Make sure it is aligned with the top shroud, the carbon fiber top shroud. Just gently pressing trace around the board. So I'm going to uh, cut a couple strips of VHB tape. And uh, something to note, this VHB tape is the best because it's about half a millimeter thick, so it will align best with the elevation of this hole. All right, when they're welded here, you can peel off the backing. Okay, you can uh, position this, line up the connector with the hole. Try to get it underneath the um, uh, ribbon cable there on the top right. And now that I got situated in the hole, I'm going to set it down in position on top of the LCD, lining it up with the, uh, the marks I made in Sharpie. Double confirming, yes, that does look good. And then the uh, final uh, test is, can I actually install the 31 pin ribbon cable? So for this, you just kind of got to lift it up a little bit. Okay, looks like it's going in. Uh, this is where tweezers, once again, uh, can become helpful. Just make sure you're pushing on the tabs on either side such that it goes in all the way. And then lock it down gently. Make sure it's fully seated. I'll repeat the same process for the other two ribbon cables. And for those that are curious, this ribbon cable controls the buttons. This one carries the data for the uh, touch screen. And then this one's for the LCD display. All right, this part is really satisfying. We get to put in these uh, side shrouds. So these corner bezels also serve as guides. You just slide it into those notches on the side and everything should line up perfectly. Uh, lastly, the bottom shroud. All right, and you can double check that the uh, notches are going in there. So that one's good, this one's good, this one's good, and the top one is good. We can finally install our back plate. The side that we want to have on the bottom is the one with all the notches on it. And uh, make sure the holes line up with the standoffs. Okay, that went on there pretty easily. There are gaps actually. I think you gotta maybe sometimes press Okay, okay. Yeah, so you just gotta work your way around the sides and look for any exposed tabs and then uh, push on the shroud until the uh, notches engage. Okay, you should have six remaining M2 screws. Um, so go ahead and uh, install all of these into the back of the LCD monitor. Okay, now go ahead and um, tighten all of these screws all the way. And these are just M2 screws, so you don't need to like work them down very hard at all. And then tighten from the front side. And that's it. You should be good to go. I do recommend adding a screen protector. And I'll try to link that down below in the description. If I have not done it, if you cannot find that link, then uh, shoot me a comment. You can install this screen protector after you've installed the LCD into the uh, case. So that should be no problem. So get your little LCD monitor and the uh, cable that comes with your kit. Plug that into the monitor until those little clicky clicks click. And then you can plug in into the back of the drone. And then let's see what happens if we plug it in. Okay, we got an image on the screen. Pressing the buttons, the buttons seem to be working. And pressing the touch screen, that seems to be working. I can switch between codecs just fine. 20 millimeter fan I have in there is actually a little too uh, fast. So hopefully yours isn't quite as loud as mine. Okay, next is the lens shimming procedure. And I'm gonna use this lens to demonstrate. 
If you notice, when I change the focus of this lens, you can see that the closer focal, like 0.12 meters or whatever it is, um, if I go toward infinity, you'll notice that the rear glass element is actually moving backward. So let me demonstrate that. This is close focus. This is infinity. This is close focus. So we've established that as we move the lens further back, um, the focus gets closer to infinity. So I just want you to understand that concept first. So the goal of this procedure, by uh, setting the shims into the sensor, we want it so as we uh, focus to infinity, we can see on the camera that objects that are far away are in focus. A good place to start with the uh, shims is um, 0.3 and 0.5, which adds up to 0 0.8 millimeters. So whatever shims you have in your camera, first start off with whatever shims gives you approximately 0 0.8, or as close as you can get to it. If you are 0 0.75 or 0 0.85, then that's fine. Uh, this will still be a good starting point. So let's install those now. I'm gonna use my uh, two millimeter hex driver to remove these rear screws which are holding on the back plate. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and remove these thumb screws in order to allow me to bend the camera even further downward, which makes it easier to access the rear portion. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. Do not need you for now. Okay, so for the next operations, a squeeze bulb is going to be handy for blowing out any dust that may get in there during the installation process. So use your Phillips number one screwdriver to uh, unscrew these three screws holding on the sensor assembly. Okay, I'm gonna get these uh, um, sensor shims ready, ready at the go. I'm gonna pull off the sensor assembly and place these sensor shims on there. Um, you don't actually want to place the sensor shims onto the lens mount. You want to mount them to the sensor side. The reason why is because this new sensor ribbon cable plug design, it uh, makes it a little more difficult to install the shims. So you actually kind of have to shoehorn them into place around the PCB. So I'm going to do that now. Just like that. Let's do the other one now. Okay, not a big deal though. Make sure no dust. Uh, holding it, kind of pinching it from the top like this to hold the sensor shims, I'm going to place the sensor onto the lens mount. And you might have to jiggle it around to make sure those holes line up just right. And let's screw it in. When you screw these screws in, um, you wanna tighten them down all the way, but of course you may need to unscrew them, so keep that in mind in case your shimming is a little off. It's now time to test uh, our focus. Maybe tighten the uh, hinge a little bit such that it doesn't just flop over. Now you can install a lens. I'm using the Laowa 7.5 Micro Four Thirds, um, but use your preferred lens, whichever one you're gonna be using most often. And I'm gonna tighten up this hinge further so the lens doesn't cause the uh, the mount to flop forward, but I'm still able to adjust the angle. So now I'm gonna install a battery and move that forward a bit to make space for the monitor. Plugging in the monitor and plugging into the drone, turn it on and see what we get. Okay, what you wanna do first is go into your settings, go to monitor, then uh, look for focus assist. Turn that on, but what it does is when things are in focus, it will highlight it in red. Next, you wanna press the magnifying glass button. Tilt the lens with the center of the image um, on something that's distant. In this case, it's my neighbor's window. And then you're going to, uh, and then on the lens, you wanna set your aperture to the lowest aperture number as possible. And if your highlights are getting blown out on your screen, you can also uh, change your shutter speed I, used, I uh, find that to be the easiest way, but it looks like 180 degree shutter 
is fine for me right now. The purpose of opening up the aperture as wide as possible is to produce the most shallow depth of field so that you can pinpoint the focal plane more accurately. So I'm going to move the focal ring of the lens around until I see on the monitor that it is in focus, where it gets in focus on infinity and when it happens. So as I'm turning the focus ring on my lens, I can see that it's uh, not quite in focus when I reach infinity. I think I can get it to focus a little bit more. So right now, if you hear this, that little click means I'm bottoming out the infinity. So I'm like a little past infinity and it's not quite coming into focus. So that means I need to actually reduce the shimming a little bit to bring the lens closer to the sensor, but only by a uh, a tiny, tiny hair's width. So the only other shims I have that also came with the camera are 2.1 shims. So I'm thinking what I'm going to do is replace the 0.3 with 0.1 and then that will give me an overall shimming of 0.7 which will bring the lens slightly closer and hopefully that does the trick. So I'm going to remove the lens and uh, put on the cover plate, tilt everything all the way forward and let's remove the sensor plate. And then I can plop it right off, lay that down flat, and let's remove the 0.3 shim. So I'm gonna take that, put it somewhere safe, and I'm gonna take two of these 0.1 shims, replace it with these. Okay, make sure uh, everything's laying down nice and flat, and the shims are aligned with the holes, and I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall it. Oh, see, uh, this little cable here was getting in the way, so I wasn't able to push it down. So just be careful of this little thing. And let's reinstall these three screws. Okay, make sure to um, screw in all the way so that it's pressing up against the shims. And let's reinstall our lens. And make sure the aperture is set to two or your lowest aperture. And let's go from there. Okay, so we got our image again. And now I'm gonna press the magnifying glass and then change the focus to infinity. And it looks like that did the trick. Now, when it's at infinity, I can see the red highlighting around the, uh, the window in the distance. Now I'm gonna go ahead and remove the lens, replace the uh, little cap thing, and I'm just gonna double check that all three of these screws are nice and tight. And let's replace the uh, top tray and the rear plate, or the back plate. And then we can finally plug in our lens communication ribbon cable this cable is necessary for uh, electronic lenses. And now let's replace the top tray and the back plate and screw in these M2.5 six millimeter socket head screws. I'm gonna tighten these um, hinge screws and return the thumb nuts. All right, you've made it. Hopefully you came out the other side of this experience with a working Blackmagic naked FPV cinema drone. So get back out there and fly and hopefully this little guy will help you have more fun doing it.